les tres ponències, jo diria complementàries i interessants, obriríem el torn de preguntes. Sí, la meva pregunta és pel Neil Johnson i el que m'agradaria saber és que quan has comentat que en el cas que les persones que identifiqueu estan en situacions d'infravitatge i aleshores contacteu amb els propietaris incoant una sanció econòmica i si cal anar a judici, entenc que això és un procés que s'allarga bastant en el temps i mentrestant aquestes persones continuen estant en situacions d'infravitatge. Quina mena de solucions alternatives teniu en cas que la sentència no sigui a favor de l'Ajuntament o que el propietari, malgrat que hagi de fer aquests arranjaments a l'habitatge, continuï dient que no? I la segona pregunta és si a Liverpool teniu un diagnòstic d'habitatges buits, en cas que hi hagi habitatges buits a mans de propietaris o bé d'entitats financeres, i si ja teniu alguna mena de conveni per reallotjar aquestes persones en situació d'infravitatge en aquests habitatges que puguin estar buits en format de lloguer social o mediant en l'import del lloguer. Gràcies. We have a power under the Environmental uh, Health Act that we can do works in default. So we can, if we deem that it's really, really necessary because it's uh, a threat to life, we can do the works and then charge the uh, landlord. So that answers that. There are 12,000 empty properties in Liverpool. Um, there's an actual team that looks for the owners of these properties. Sometimes they, they don't even know they own a property, as, as weird as that sounds. Um, some people uh, may have moved away to another country uh, and forget that they own a property. Others have inherited a property and don't know that they've inherited a property. So yeah, we have a team that go out and look for uh, these. Um, in the UK, we have a, a tax called uh, council tax. So that pays for police service, uh, emergency services, uh, your local services like bin collection, etc. cetera. Um, so if these properties have been empty for a long time, we can actually force the sale of the property to pay the tax that they owe. So once again, we can also renovate this property because we'll get a higher income. Uh, we'll search out the landlord and say, here's what's left. Uh, if we can't find them, then it just goes to central government. As for moving people out of the properties, no. Um, that would be up to the individual to, to move. We'd uh, offer them support to get onto what's called a property pool. So that would be uh, a housing list. And depending on the severity of the environmental health impact that that property would be, depends where they'd sit in the system. So if it's quite severe and it's a risk of health to children, elderly, etc. they'd go higher up on the list and they're likely to get moved much quicker. Um, otherwise, if it's not a threat to their life, um, it'd be a case of, yeah, sometimes it can take a couple of months to get things sorted. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Hola. Jo volia preguntar als ponents de Liverpool i de Gent si hi ha algun tipus d'implicació per part de les companyies subministradores d'energia, de gas, d'electricitat en el tema de la pobresa energètica. O si hi ha algun tipus de control, per exemple, amb els talls de subministrament i si s'impliquen d'alguna manera en aquests programes que heu explicat. Perquè, per exemple, Liverpool sí que comentava, no?, en la presentació hi havia els logos d'EON, d'algunes d'aquestes companyies. De quina manera s'impliquen en aquests programes, si és econòmicament o en personal o de quina manera, no? I també preguntar si aquestes companyies fan algun tipus de tarifa social per persones vulnerables, si això existeix. Gràcies. Um, 
as I mentioned, we, in, in Belgium we have a lot of commercial suppliers, and uh, when you're being cut off by the commercial suppliers, have the right to cut you off if you don't pay your bills. But there is also a social supplier that is being um, that is being uh, uh, for, uh, subsidized by the government, and they cannot just uh, cut somebody off. They have to inform the local government. We do it with listings. Um, every month, like uh, these people are in, in danger of being cut off, and we al always uh, take contact and try and arrange something. So that's that's one uh, specific cooperation that has been uh, enforced by the law uh, in, in Flanders. There is as well a social um, a social um, tariff for energy. Um, but that's um, only for a small part of the of the population. That's that's again, but that's not not enough, as uh, as you ask me. Maybe in Liverpool. Um, so I work with the energy companies that were on the list, and they have a, a, an obligation to help people who are fuel poor uh, that are receiving benefits. So I work on projects with those organizations to try and deliver uh, to people who we identify, so individual referrals, but also on area-based schemes. Um, all these energy companies have trust funds and charitable arms as well, so we'll actually do applications in to remove debts so, so we can start again and we can then negotiate tariffs with the energy companies. Uh, sometimes if people get into debt, the energy companies will just come out and they'll install a prepayment meter, um, which is not ideal, um, but it's a way that they recover their cost, and that's why it's more expensive to get your energy from a prepayment meter because you're also paying off your debts from previously. Um, other than that, not a great help. Um, we, I work with senior managers from these companies to organize and arrange uh, the energy company obligation area. Um, Liverpool Council is looking at doing our own energy supply. Is that gone? Off? Can everyone hear? Yeah. Um, so I, I'd love to do what these do. I have a social provider. So yeah, that's a great idea. And I'll be taking that back to, um, to Liverpool and say, well, you know, if we set up our own energy company and we've got an energy tariff, if people go into that kind of debt, Great. Let's let's give them a um, let's bring them onto our social tariff. So yeah, that'd be that's that's a fantastic scheme, and I will be taking that back. Um, hopefully, that answers all your question. Buenas, buenos días, buenas tardes. Uh, yo creo que lo más uh, difícil es conseguir recursos de la administración para intervenir, ¿no? como en el caso, por ejemplo, de, de Gante, que entiendo que la administración local ha apostado por tener unos fondos para uh, invertir y mejorar la situación en estas familias. Quizás si pudiéramos mm, conseguir poner valor, a, valor económico a, las, a la pérdida en salud o a las muertes prematuras que se producen por las malas condiciones de la, vida, de la vivienda, como entiendo que se está haciendo en Liverpool, ¿no? si no lo he entendido mal, quizás si pudiéramos generalizar esta práctica eh, sería más fácil que la, las administraciones en general apostaran por dotarse de recursos eh, públicos para, para avanzar en la línea ¿no? de, de Gante y obviamente también de Liverpool, que me parece que son dos magníficos ejemplos de los cuales me gustaría que aquí pudiéramos tomar ejemplo. ¿no? Yeah, um, the Liverpool model's been rolled out in quite a few cities across the country. So at this present time, public health came under the local authority, so the, the government is paying for this. Um, what we struggle to is convince the medical professionals that they should contribute to this. So the CCG, which is the National Health Service, they don't put any funds in. Uh, social services, they don't put any funds in. Whereas, like Mrs. Smith, 
who now gets a warm home, she might not have to go into a care home, which saves an inordinate amount of money. It's, it's, un, it's unreal. But none of these stakeholders really engage in that. And uh, they just say, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? But it's, it's very difficult. You'd have to do a factor analysis, like, like climate change analysis, and people still don't believe it. You know, it's, it's many, many arguments. It's just engaging in that conversation at a high enough level to get buy-in. Um, and that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment, as well as my energy stuff. It's promoting the program. Coming here today, this promotes the program. It puts us on a world stage. Um, the case study that I submitted to NICE, which is the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, they provide guidelines for health institutes to follow on excess cold and morbidity related to cold homes. So I submitted what we did to that, and that gave us a profile again. And it becomes more difficult for the politicians, for the health sector to say, we're not going to contribute to that because the public outcry when that goes makes it very difficult. And that's the way to do it, get publicized, get known, um, and do what you can. Hola, bon dia. Uh, jo volia preguntar, suposo que coneixen una de les grans problemàtiques que hi ha aquí a Espanya, que és l'execució hipotecària, que inclús ha fet que hagi sorgit una plataforma bastant potent en defensa d'aquest àmbit. En els vostres països teniu aquesta problemàtica també? És molt menor? Uh, teniu programes al respecte? Perquè, sobretot els municipis petits, en aquest aspecte tenim molt poques eines per poder actuar i poder donar una sortida a aquesta gent que es troba en aquesta situació. Gràcies. Uh, from UK perspective, uh, it's very difficult to evict somebody from a property, incredibly so. Um, you basically, you have to go to court and prove that the person's done something to, I don't know, to the property, you know, it's, it's, there's very tight legislation. Um, and you've got recourse. If, if your landlord does kick you out, you know, once again, they're, they're liable to court action. Uh, I can't remember any particular, the law names itself, but yeah, we, we have laws that protect people in properties, whether or not you've signed a contract to live in that property. Once you've signed one, and even if you don't renew it, say it's a 12-month contract, your landlord cannot just evict you. Uh, they've got to give you X amount of notice, at least a month worth of notice, and in which case you'd come along to the local government and go, I'm being evicted, I'm going to be homeless on X date, and you therefore go to the top of the list for social housing, social provision. Um, if that's not available, if there's no, no availability there, the, the government will put you in a hotel until they find a property. Uh, and that's how it works in the UK. Well, in, um, in Belgium, there's, um, the local authority is always being in contact if somebody is, uh, is in danger of eviction. In social housing and in private housing, um, there's always contact with the local government. So that's a really good system. But of course, we go out and go and contact those people. If they don't react, we write letters, we go a house, we do house visits. If they don't react, if they don't cooperate, then there's nothing left to do for us as well. So that's, that, keeps, uh, that's, that stays a problem. And then these people are ev uh, eventually being evicted. So that uh, stays a problem. Bé, doncs, jo crec que han sigut prou reveladores i interessants les tres ponències, sobretot les respostes. Fixeu-vos que us preguntem molt als que veniu de fora perquè en el nostre territori doncs, tenim problemes de l'alçada d'un campanar no? i, per tant, ens interessen les vostres experiències. Jo crec que han sigut interessants i a mi, especialment, m'ha semblat que sou molt pragmàtics i aquest pragmatisme ajuda a 
d'alguna manera, a fer evolucionar amb més velocitat les qüestions. En el nostre en el nostre entorn, el que va més ràpid és l'increment d'aquesta pobresa. I, en canvi, tot just estem començant d'una forma important a abordar el problema. I aquesta problemàtica esperem que no ens devori d'una forma tremenda. Penso que en el vostre cas, en fi, us felicito per les vostres polítiques i sobretot per la lucidesa de com atacar-les. Si no hi ha més qüestions, en fi, donaríem per tancada aquesta sessió. Moltes gràcies. Thank mm -hmm. you.